This is a toy, a model of a tractor owned by a man named Dale Castile. However, this isn't just any toy. It's a toy that never should have been made, not because it's faulty or defective or some other horrible reason. It's a model of a tractor that should not exist in the world today. The tractor it was modeled after was experimental, and as far as we know, only one was ever made, and it was supposed to have been destroyed after it was tested. Except it wasn't, as is evident by the toy you see here. This toy tractor and the original it was modeled after are an important part of the history of Minneapolis Moline. But more than that, it is an important part of the history of the Lalleman family of Illinois. This man is Jeff Lalleman. Jeff has spent countless hours uncovering this forgotten story of the Minneapolis Moline experimentals and how his family was involved. That story, which stretches out over the past 100 years, starts where so many of these American stories begin, at Ellis Island. In the early 1900s, a drastic change was starting to take place in the United States. Immigrants from all over Europe were coming to America seeking a better life. One of those immigrants was Camille Lalleman. A short, fiery man from Zaren, Belgium, Camille did what many immigrants of the time did. In America, where 41% of the labor force was involved in agriculture, Camille came to America and joined his relatives to work the land, in a time when most of that work was done without modern farm equipment. But the landscape was changing. Small, rural farms were giving way to larger operations. Mechanization of the American farm was making it easier for less people to work more land in less time. The Minneapolis Moline Implement Company was formed in 1929 with the merger of three smaller companies, the Moline Plow Company, Minneapolis Threshing Machine Company, and the Minneapolis Steel and Machinery Company. By 1930, only 16% of the workforce was involved in agriculture, in large part because of the proliferation of tractors on American farms through the 1920s. The Lalleman family was part of this change. Camille's son, Felix, worked at the Moline implement plant that was part of the Minneapolis Moline family. His boss was a man named John Seaholm. My uncle, Uncle Felix, worked for the company. He worked in the experimental department. And this Mr. Seaholm was his boss. And through that relationship, that's how they ended up running the farm. The experimental farm was located between Erie and uh, Prowstown, Illinois, along Old Route 2, which was at that time it was called Moline Road. Along the Rock River, the farm was isolated. It was way in the back by the river, so uh, they could do testing back there without people seeing it. Isolated fields. Felix Lalleman's relationship with Minneapolis Moline allowed the Lalleman family access to experimental equipment and allowed them to continue farming when many small farmers had to sell out. Yes, in 1942, we started a farm, and uh, then... We didn't have a tractor, so then Felix came and, and Chuck, he said to Ch uh, Ch Felix says to Chuck, I'll give you a good deal, he said. So we bought the tractor and a disc and a plow for $1,500. But in 1941, the face of American farming changed drastically. Farmers were now not only facing shortages in steel to build machines, but also shortages in manpower to help run the farms. I said, Fred and I can do all the farming. And you guys and did. And Fred and I did it. That was during the World War II because we couldn't, we couldn't, you could hire a, an 18-year-old boy because they drafted them all. After the war broke out, farmers were tasked with feeding the troops and producing enough food to keep people fighting the war on the home front. In 1943, Minneapolis Moline held a war conference at their Hopkins, Minnesota plant, as well as on the Seaholm farm in Illinois. The company brought in salesmen from all over the country to see the latest technological advances in farming equipment. These dealers were from all over the United oh, States. Yes, all came they were, in. Oh, there was a lots of boys there. Yeah. Lots of boys there. As part of the war effort, women were being put to work doing jobs that men had typically done, including working the farm. They wanted to have uh, a woman uh, operating these tractors in 1943 when this was taking place. And they, they showed Ann Ann driving the tractor like the pictures show. 
and operating it. And I think they were trying to show that, that women could operate, you know, these machines and stuff and tractors and, and that the, the technology had evolved that it, it didn't take a lot of strong farmers to run to operate the equipment. Yeah, the they were easy to run these tractors they, they at, were at that time. Operate. I would have drive them, them in them days and the ones today because I don't know how to drive the ones today. <laughs> With all the finale in there. I don't yeah. know how we know how to start it. <laughs> After the war conference, some of the equipment was left on the Seaholm farm for the family to use, including some of the experimental tractors. Because we had one, that they had, we had, because I always rode that tractor. I always rode okay. that tractor. The relationship between the Lalleman family and Minneapolis Moline was solid, and the next generation of Lalleman farmers purchased Minneapolis Moline tractors as well. My mom's dad, they had a John Deere, and I said, why don't you buy a Minneapolis tractor? <laughs> Fred Lalleman, who was Felix's brother and Jeff's father, continued the tradition in his own family. Fred's children, including Jeff, still talk about the Minneapolis Moline tractors they used as children growing up on their father's farm. The, 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 the 445 was always on the grinder, wasn't it? In the, in the 445 the was the one that Dad bought that was about the same time Marshall was born. The 445 was like the, the fastest house. tractor that yeah, we had. Yeah. No gear was the fastest. It could outsmoke that M any day of the week. If I remember right, the 445 was that it was on a test or something that he, Dad bought it from Jaegers. That's why was, probably was the only new demo, tractor. Demo, yeah. demo, or demo tractor? Yeah. Okay. Recently, Jeff Lalleman learned of the experimental tractors that were part of his grandfather's farming operation in the 30s and 40s from Ann. Jeff decided to pursue the history of these tractors a bit farther. When Ann Ann introduced me to those pictures, that she showed me at the family reunion. Well, then that, since that reunion, I started doing a little more uh, research on it, and the sad part of it is, is, is they have all passed away, and Anne Ann is the only one that was there on the farm that remembered what the, what happened out there, uh, the involvement with the experimental stuff, uh, how Uncle Felix was involved with it. Uh, all way before my time, and knowing that this that that our family was an important part of the history of this company, and and uh, they didn't talk much about it, so I just figured the story needed to be told. Well, when I got the pictures, I was working at an implement dealership in town, a uh, part-time job, and I knew one of the guys that worked with us. His father was a collector, and so I took the pictures to him, and then he in fact got me in touch with Roger Moore from Vail, Iowa who puts out the Minneapolis Smolene Corresponder magazine. He knew he would go through the pictures and said well this one was never in production and this one was never in production. And this picture was from Uncle Frank's daughters gave it to me and it's the, the picture of Uncle Frank's neighbor in Atkinson and he's standing in front of this tractor and this picture yeah, was taken was, in 1960. Well, that shows that this that this tractor was <laughs> was not destroyed which we were all led to believe that it was. Uh, I talked to different people that, that lived around Uncle Frank and that were still alive and they said well this tractor had problems it had axle housings breaking that they welded welded reinforcement on axle housing and when Cast when Dale Castile located that tractor he called me and when I went out there right off the bat the first thing I went to was looked at the axle housings and they were enforced reinforced with, with welded the problem that Uncle That's Frank a picture had. of my of my dad and my, my brother Ron when he was a baby and this was out mm. at, at the farm we're not sure of uh, pulling a combine but this experimental mm -hmm. tractor ended up at Uncle Chuck's, which is Aunt Gabriel's husband, and then that tractor was restored by Roy Lee Book, and that's the tractor now. And he said that he was out there in the parade, uh, Roy Lee Book, and he was driving that experimental, <coughs> and an old, <coughs> the older fellow came up to him and said, that tractor was supposed to be destroyed. Why are you driving that? How did you end up with this tractor? That's probably the key picture of everything we determined from that picture that that tractor wasn't destroyed. Mm -hmm. And the same way the one that you ended up with, Aunt Gabriel, mm -hmm. was not destroyed that Roy Lee Book ended up Oh, yeah. <clears throat> because of his efforts, this part of the Minneapolis Moline story can now be told. These tractors, which have been lovingly restored by other people, now have a more complete history, which will forever be tied to the Lalleman family.